This short video will demonstrate how to use an encounter form to enter transactions. We'll go to a new place to enter transactions. So instead of going to lists like we've done in the past, we'll go to activities. So select activities, then enter transactions. If you'd like, you can also use the shortcut button instead of using the menu bar. Here's the same thing called transaction entry. Both of them will bring up the same window. The window is broken into three separate components, the top component being a summary of the patient, the middle section, the actual procedures or charges that you'll enter, and finally the bottom portion that will capture any kind of payments the patient might make on that day. Today I'm going to enter in Hiro Tanaka. You'll find her information in the source document that was a PDF that was sent um, to you, or I'm sorry, available to you in Blackboard. Um, and it indicates that she was there on October the 3rd, 2016. So I always check my date, make sure that that reflects that particular date. Then you'll start by selecting her chart up here in the very top. Notice there are only two boxes that are white that give you the potential to put some kind of information in. I'll just type T for Tanaka and you'll see my list comes up and highlights any T's, in this case only one, and that would be her. It preloads or automatically loads a case. And uh, a word of caution here, always make sure that you have the correct case for the patient. Sometimes you have just created the case, other times it may be an existing case. Now if you remember on our previous videos, we created this case uh, for Hiro Tanaka, she was in a car accident. But I'm going to confirm this because I'm going to click this drop down um, arrow here. Remember that she has allergies to penicillin, so that will always pop up for us just as a, a constant reminder for us. And then you'll see this drop down. There is only one case for Hiro Tanaka accident back pain, so we're good to go. Um, now I'm ready to move down to the charges portion of it. And I'm simply going to click in the box for date. It will preload the date based on what the date is down here. Or you can manually change it if you would like. Either way, by just uh, typing over this. I'll, I'll just type it again just to show you that it will continue typing through whatever you've put in there. Then you want to turn to your encounter form. Now remember, this encounter form is not in the back of your book. It is a PDF document that is in the Week 9 folder under Assignments in Blackboard. And she has one procedure that she had, which is an office visit. When you look at that, you will see a list of procedures on the encounter form, and only one of them is checked. It happens to be Procedure 99202. And notice that it will uh, fill that in as you type. You can select that, and then just press Tab. How many uh, units indicates how many times was this procedure performed. In this case it was an office visit so there was only one. I can tab through indicating the amount of $88. Now it asks for a diagnosis. The diagnosis you have to find on the encounter form. It's at the bottom of the page and it's not written in words, it's actually a number. And you really have to train your eyes to look for that. It is diagnosis 724.2. And um, again, if you notice, once you begin typing it, it will automatically populate the field here, and you can locate it. So you can select that, then just press Tab. Uh, Hiro Tanaka's treatment is very straightforward. She only has one diagnosis. You can have on this screen four, um, and we could alter the screen and have it up to eight different diagnoses if we wanted to. But we're going to keep this simple. She only has one problem today that she's here to see us for, and um, that's all we'll enter. So di the box for diagnosis 2, 3, and 4 remain empty. These uh, boxes following them with 1, 2, 3, and 4 and then a check mark, the software is asking this particular procedure applies to which particular diagnosis. In this case, again, very straightforward. It's We only have one diagnosis, so this procedure goes toward just that one diagnosis. Then we have a next column that asks for who is the physician or the provider. She is a physician, or her physician is Dr. Katherine Yan. You can also find that on the um, source, uh, the encounter form. Uh, POS stands for place of service. The general default 
code for place of service whenever it's a doctor's office is 1-1. Type of service, if it is something different, a lab procedure or something, we would put a code in there for that. We don't, we're not going to do that here, so that's taken care of. How much does the insurance plan allow for? This information automatically pre-populates whenever we select our procedure because earlier the database had been built with those numbers in there. M1 stands for the modifier. We will not be using this column to be adding any modifiers. We're going to keep it simple. Modifiers have to do with the type of procedure that it is or any kind of um, extenuating circumstances pertaining to that procedure. So ignore that for this course. And then a check in the copay. If there is a copay that says that maybe that if she had a $20 copay, that's where the um, uh, money would go toward. Okay, so now that I've com completed that, I come down here and save. Now note, once you save, watch what happens to this column up here. Currently our charges are all zero. When I save this, and I always reminder, every time we choose, a, we work in the future, it's always going to ask us, do you know you put a date in the future? It's kind of a reminder, did you type it incorrectly? Do I want to save this transaction? Yes, I do, because I am living in the future. And then there's another nice little reminder. This case requires a $20 copay. We'll say OK to that. Now, if you'll see up here, my total has changed to $88. And that takes care of entering a procedure. The next video, I'll show you how to take care of the copay.